Hi, and you're very welcome back to the Leitrim GA podcast here on FinalWhistle.ie. It's season two, it's episode two, and much like Dublin bus, when you're waiting for a bus, two of them come along at once. Well, that's been like that with wins for Leitrim over the last 12 months or so. No wins last season. This weekend, we got two. The hurlers, of course, they would be Lancashire over the weekend, while the footballers in action, the first win of Andy Moran's era. I'm joined by one of his coaching staff, uh, James Glancy, of course, a former senior chapter winner with the Glen Manor Hamilton and an esteemed Leitrim footballer of note himself over the years. James, you're very welcome back to the show. Thanks very much, Brittany. Thanks for having me. Well, it's great to have you. It's great to see kind of the really good upbeat vibe. We talked about it last week on the show with Eamon Degnan from the Supporters Club uh, and with Andy himself, but there seems to be a really good vibe in the squad from the top right down to the bottom. And we saw that in spades in that performance, particularly maybe in the in the last 40 minutes of the game where Tipperary just didn't really have an answer for what Leitrim threw it. Yeah, definitely. So um, there's definitely a good vibe. Uh, I suppose when you say top to bottom, I suppose it's all all relative really. Like I think everybody across the county, there seems to be a, an air of positivity. And within the squad, it's the exact same. So it is uh, from the top of the management to all of the players there and down to the supporters who are getting behind and we've seen that on Sunday in Thurlis the, the crowd that, that made the trip there like you know you could see the yellow hats from the 50 mile 50 mile uh, uh, walk and the run or whatever challenge. people yeah walk and challenge that people are, trying, are, are doing and it's just it's fantastic to see that, that the feel good factor that, that has that is it that's in the county you know I suppose when Andy approached you last year when he was in the frame for the job and, and you were part of his ticket um, what was that contact for you to get that kind of call? I know you know Andy from IT Sligo days, but um, how early in the, that process were you involved? And, and was it an easy answer for you to say yes when the county came calling? Um, how early in the process? Uh, I suppose you would have initially talked to Barry. Like, look, at the end of the day here, uh, for me, uh, Andy Moore is a friend and he's a person. And it was a relationship that we had from, from Sligo IT, thankfully. Uh, so, like, any time I've ever contacted Andy in relation to anything, it was a friend. It was as a friend, and before he was the all star that he was, before it was the football of the year that he was, I just knew him as a, as a, as a really good guy, you know. Um, and when I when his name popped up on the phone last uh, last October, uh, well, you know, you'd have an inkling what it could be about. But knowing Andy and the person that he is, it could be about absolutely anything because it's the same when my phone, my number would pop up on his phone. It could be anything, anything I've ever asked him to do. Like literally, you'd see the two blue ticks on the WhatsApp message, and he'd be back to you, but it comes up straight away. Uh, and I think you know he's the same with, with most people. So he's just he's just a really good guy, you know. Yeah, in terms of I suppose the impact it's made. Let's talk about the game itself on Sunday. Uh, fantastic performances all over the field. Uh, Tipperary, a bit fortuitous maybe with at least one of the goals, if not two. Eight points probably even flatters them in terms of the result. It's very rare for a Leitrim team to be looking at a game having won by eight points, thinking, well, we probably deserve to win by more. It doesn't happen that often. No, it doesn't. Um... But I suppose the, what the players themselves have done is they've, you know, it hasn't been ourselves, the management team, and the players have come in and they've raised the bar and they have set these targets they want to see themselves. We're not telling them that to do certain things. It's them that's coming to us and saying, we want to do this, we want to improve, we want to get better. So whilst you may say the eight points didn't really flatter us, I suppose, at the end of the day, looking back on it, uh, it was March 2020 since we won a game. Um, I suppose we wanted to get the win Sunday. That was the most important thing. Uh, you know, playing the wind in the first half, we were, you know, just going in at half time and we were going to be playing against the elements. But thankfully, I think even stepped out on the sideline just after half time and Mike and Andy just said that wind is starting to change a bit. Uh, so, you know, I think we were due a little bit of luck as well in relation to something like that. So it was really, you know, something like that. I don't think the wind won us the game and it didn't lose Tipperary the game or anything like that. But it was definitely a factor that kind of was to, to our benefit at a, at, a, at a certain time in the game. And winning by the eight points, like we didn't care what we won by as long as we got the win because the players, you know, and ultimately the players have to take full credit for this regardless of what it is because they're driving things on. And I know that's, you know, you hear that from managers, the players and they're doing this and players doing that, but like we're just trying to facilitate things. Uh, Andy and Mike, Barry and myself and all of the backroom team. And, you know, you hear about, you know, Andy and, and things like that, but it's really about the people behind the scenes that we don't see, you know, the pit men, um, Thomas and, and Keith, you know, the doctor, Dr. Loftus, Shane Bowen, Fergal Wynn, the strength and condition team, Aiden and Dahi, they're doing such work in the background and they're not, they're not getting the credit that they deserve at the moment. But bringing it all back, we're only two games into the league and at the end of the day, we're in 
win rate. So we won one last one and we just want to kick on and try and try to be the best that we can be. And, you know, I suppose myself, yourself and the general public, like we're, we're obviously proud of each from people, but we want a football team that people are proud of. You know, and, and every day that we head off, and head off to the Centre of Excellence, like we just want to make sure that we're doing the best that we can and represent each one in a positive frame of mind. Absolutely. In terms of that excellence, we saw on the pitch the other uh, day, and I, I didn't make it to the game, but I did watch the video back this, uh, yesterday morning, and um, I was very impressed at midfield, where we just seemed to, to boss the game, both Donal and Pierce, uh, Donal in, of course, and, and Pierce Dolan, just seemed to have con complete control of that area of the field. And it really was a, a platform to build on and, and the, the style of play we seem to be working on we seem to have seven or eight forwards coming from wing back and everywhere uh, to create chances up front management team we've been looking at games uh, from the last number of years because a lot of, a lot of the players have been on the panel for a number of years um, and they've had that bit of experience so we've been looking at the patterns of play and positions that they've played and how they've been playing and trying to come up with you know various different options that we can have we can put to them and interact with them on it and try, try to work on them sort of things so I suppose, you know, Pierce Dolan, say for example, and, and Donald, uh, like there's only three or four years of an age gap there between the two of them, but Donald would have played a lot more football over the years than Pierce. And yet, now, I know when I was playing, and Pierce Dolan played for Aho Willen against us in the county, in the county finals and the league finals, like he was just an outstanding footballer. And I suppose seeing him playing now for Leach from the level he's playing at, that's, 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 that's what we knew was in him. Um, and I'm not saying we got it out of him, it's the belief that he has in himself. And he's, he's doing really well, but he's only one of of the many that there is and you know there's so many people that's pushing him and boys that are on the sideline chomping to get in and at the, at the moment we have players that aren't making our 26 that are really pushing on them lads and they want to get into the 26 and they're pushing to stay in the 26 and get into 15 so it's just you know it's a good place to be in at the moment and, and, and it's exciting it, it, obviously from your own point of view uh, many many years in the league from jersey yourself how does this squad compare in terms of the talent that's there at the moment Versus what teams you might have played in over the year. Is this up there oh, one of the best? Uh, well, I suppose it's very different. Like it'd be very easy for me to say, obviously, you know, oh, it's better than everything. But it was a it was a different era from when I started, and even the culture and things like that was different. So it's it's it, it just it, it's different. That's that's probably the best way to put it. But talent wise, there's without doubt, uh, you know, there's still some players out there that we'd love to maybe that would that weren't able to commit due to, due to things that were outside of their control. But in general feedback and the response from players has been has been really really positive really re really energetic and uh you know if fellas want to commit they've mentioned that you know in the future if it is a possibility that they would be able to come back into the panel at some stage which is you know a really positive place for us as a county to be in because it's not that long ago that, that we weren't as positive or, uh, about things absolutely uh, i suppose looking forward five games left in the league campaign currently sitting mid-table based after those two as you mentioned one win, one loss so far, but the loss coming against Cavan, who are expected to top this group uh, from early on, even before the game started, they were expected to be the favourites for this competition. So, is a league final within this group's grasp? Is that the target at the moment? Uh, is the target? Probably not at the moment. Um, the target three last weekend was to get a win. You know, that was, if I'm honest, that that was that was the target. So I suppose we re need to reassess our targets, and that's what we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. Uh, in two weeks' time, we're going to play one of the teams at the top of the table, and we need to try and come up with a plan to try and beat them. And we'll be playing them again in eight to ten weeks again in the championship. So it's it's a real challenge. London are on a on a high at the moment, and I'm not just playing it up. I suppose I'm just a big believer in the facts that are there and in front of you. And at the end of the day, they've played two, one two. We played two, one one, and lost one. So. They're ahead of us at the moment. Uh, they have a good training camp. I heard a few of the players talking about that. They came over for a weekend and played two games. So, you know, even going into the league, they had more games played probably than ourselves. So they're on a high. Uh, I suppose our target is the next two games. We took the first two games. We wanted to really, uh, I suppose, get a style of play and really see that the players are really buying into what we're looking for and they're working really hard. And, and without doubt, that's been that's been evident. Um, so with the next two days, that's about replicating that again and hopefully coming out with two wins again so that we can set ourselves to a good place going into the last few rounds of games. Yes, well, both goals of the weekend, of course, scored by two relative newcomers to the panel. I know Tom Pryor has been around under 20 level, but he's really only broken in um, to the squad in the last, maybe to, towards the tail end of the last season and now this year. James Rooney, quite similar as well. But uh, how much of an impact has it been having those kind of players, even your Donald Casey's, 
didn't play a whole lot of football last year, but he's back in the team this year, making a big impact. Yeah, the, the young, the younger players. Um, I, I don't know what I class James Rooney. I know he's a good man of mine, but I wouldn't class him earlier. The young player, he was on the scene there. I think when Shane Ward was managing. So you know, that's that's seven or eight years ago. So it is at this stage. It made a big impact then, and it was in under Benny and Terry. So uh, you know, it's 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 them lads that you're talking about there. The David Casey's, or uh, sorry, the Donald Casey's, the David Bruins. Um, these fellas that are really pushing things on, you know, and there's, there's a, there's, you know, Reardon and O'Rourke, these guys, they're really pushing, pushing lads in training and that, that's what we need. We need fellas pushing the lads that are on the, out, uh, on the outer side to, to try and get in and, and get and take their place. I suppose we all see the positives. Any negatives coming out of the weekend that things to work on? I know maybe the, the second goal wasn't the prettiest, the way it just kind of bounced in. I know it took a bit of a deflection, but there's probably something that, just little easy mistakes like that, that trying to get out of the game. Uh, yeah, there's all the stuff that we want to work on. You know, at the end of the day, I suppose, I, I wouldn't say we got carried away or nothing like that as a management team, but we're just really happy with the wins on Sunday. And rather than focus on the negatives of it, we were just really happy because all we were looking for since that first week in January when the games started was to get the win. And we got that on Sunday. So I suppose rather than focus on the negatives, we want to kind of focus on that now and let the players, you know, enjoy enjoy that win. And as we come towards the weekend, we'll be focusing on, on London and, and moving forward and working on things that maybe haven't worked as well maybe last weekend or in, in the previous game. OK, well, listen, as I said, wins coming in pairs at the moment. So we'll be talking to Stephen Goldrick later in the show about the Hurlers win over Lancashire at the weekend. Uh, James, best look. Enjoy the weekend off from competitive action at least. Not that you'll probably get much time off over the weekend. And the best luck against London in two weeks' time. Uh, thanks very much, Brittany. OK? Now, of course, it's not just the boys having all the fun at the moment. The girls are back in action this weekend. They host Fermanagh uh, on Sunday afternoon in Balnamore. Uh, I know the game is being live streamed, but I'm sure the girls would love your support. And one of those girls who's going to be joining us for the next 10, 15 minutes or so is Roisin Fowley, a sharpshooter from Drummer Hare, of course, Intermediate Championship winners last year. Uh, nicely timed after her return from Australia. More on that later on. But Roisin, you're very welcome to the programme. Thanks very much. Nice to be here. You're very, very welcome. And it's great to see you back in the Leitrim Colours after a little bit of a, an extended uh, absence because I suppose you weren't in the country, you weren't even in this side of the globe. Uh, you're just back from a couple of years living in Australia, which I suppose is something that a lot of youngsters around the area yeah. in the mid-20s do nowadays. So uh, welcome home, first of all. Thank you Let's very start much. maybe, before we get into the, uh, the, the Leitrim County stuff, let's talk about maybe drum hair and a, a serious case of deja vu because we had Martin Feeney on the show last week and it feels oh. like it's almost the same interview. Um, yeah. Intermediate champions last year, you one of the, the main people in, involved in that, particularly at the scoring end of the field. Uh, I know I saw your county final last year and it was a fantastic performance from not just the club, but also the Fowley family, uh, yeah. yourself, your sister, uh, obviously playing midfield and uh, your niece playing corner forward with, with you. It was a, yeah. kind of a nice kind of family affair, but a, a big year for Drummer Hare really last year uh, to get back up to the senior grade where you probably feel you deserve to be. Yeah, totally. Um, we've been up there for, well, we really started our manager, Jerry Ballantyne, he took us over when I was only 14 years of age. And from there, we went from junior straight up to intermediate and then into senior ranks. And we stayed there for a couple of years. So it was really, really important for us to strive to get back up to the senior the senior ranks because you, you, you want to just play at the highest level possible. Absolutely. And so that was, you're talking, you're underplaying that really a little bit, to be fair, to anyone who's aware that at the time, it's 10 years ago now, sorry to say, yeah. but uh, Junior Champions 2010, Intermediate Champions 2011, uh, Senior Champions 2012. It's an unprecedented kind of uh, success and rise through the ranks that very, very few clubs ever achieve in any yeah. county, in, in any code, whether it's football, hurling, camogie, ladies football, whatever. Uh, it must be a huge kind of sense of pride in that group of girls. And there's still a few floating around yourself and Sinead, obviously, yeah. uh, two, two of the bigger names, but there's plenty of others as well. It's, it's nice to be back in that senior grade for this year. Oh, huge. And especially coming home this year, seeing so many girls coming through that were really only children when I had left and they're having such a huge impact. Amy being one of those people, uh, having a huge impact on the team and our real leaders in our team now. So it's really great to see that coming through and hopefully we can compete now at senior level. How weird is that? Because Amy's still so young. She's only about 17 or 18, if even. Yeah. And uh, when you would have left four or five years ago, she was probably in primary school. And now yeah. she's she's uh, been one of the main players in a, a, a senior adult county final yeah. alongside you. That just must be strange. It is strange, but it's so wonderful at the same time. Um, 
like myself and Amy are very close and we would have been out 10, 10 odd years ago kicking ball together when she was only about 10 or 12 and um, it's so good to be able to still do that with her and same with her other aunt Sinead so yeah it's really great yeah now moving on to the, the club championship how much did that mean to that bunch of girls to come through and and win that final because the, the final in itself was, was fairly one-sided against Carrick they put up a bit of a fight but just uh, you were just too strong on the day do you think you'll give the senior championship a good crack this year what's the, the ambition going into the senior championship later in the summer oh yeah huge um obviously we get up there we really want to compete and just try and improve on every performance that we get through um it was a huge huge um ambition for us this year to get into the senior rankings again um and our manager jerry ballantyne has never ever in the 15 years that he's been my manager asked us to win a game he just wants us to improve our performance and we'll bring that straight through into our senior um, campaign this year no and jerry i've heard him i've heard him looking saying plenty of things from the sideline over the years <laughs> i'm pretty sure he might have said at one point we'd like to win the game girls however oh, I, yeah. I, I i do take your point in terms of the, the county scene though uh you're back in, in green and gold it's been a bit of an absence as we, as we spoke about but you've started off in fine form with that kind of championship victory uh just a couple of weeks ago now um is that been and gone now that's all news into the new league campaign or or is there still a bit of kind of a feel good factor from that win in the camp? Oh, it was, it's always a good feel good factor, and it really kind of made us want to do well this year and to just bring through that um, win and feeling into January. It just helped us maybe focus and work harder in our January trainings, and hopefully we can bring that through onto the Sunday. Fantastic, and of course Sunday is the visitor for Mana. Leitrim would win this game as, as fairly hot favourites, having got to the league final last year. Uh, any idea yet as to what the team might be? Do you know if you're going to be in the starting fifteen or not? Does Hugh keep his cards pretty close to his chest on that sort of thing? He does. Yeah, like, everyone. It's anyone's game, and it's a great way to beat that anyone could be playing at any time. So yeah, Hugh keeps his cards close to him, and we'll find out on Sunday, I suppose what's the biggest difference you've noticed uh, in your time before through the, the mid teens uh to now when you're kind of uh back as a slightly older member of the yeah. squad um i'd say probably the influx of younger players coming through is is huge and they're all having such a big impact on the team um so yeah like when i was coming through the ranks there wasn't as many players coming through i feel and it's just the team really integrates well and everyone gets on really well it's a good um it's a good camp to be in part of. Do you notice the difference, though, from yourself, having been a, one of those younger girls 10 years ago to now being one of the senior players in the squad? Yeah, definitely. But I I still think I like to think of myself as one of those younger players. <laughs> we, we all do. We all do. But the, the, legs don't, the legs start to lie to you. Yeah. Um, in, ter in terms of the game, I suppose, obviously, uh, there's, there's are a whole bunch of younger players in there that you might have been that familiar with from outside your own club. Yeah. Uh, who's who's impressed you the most um, uh, coming through? What, what players are you excited to really see play alongside you this year? Um, obviously, Megan McGovern has just received the Senior Club Player of the Year this year, and she's really impressed me this year so far, and she was really great in the Connacht final. Um, Shiva Quinn is another girl, and obviously Amy. Yeah, well, of course, you have to get the family mention in there as well. But no, she's been scoring goals for fun for Drummer Hair for the last yeah. whatever number of years. So uh, she's well worthy of her place in the squad, as are yeah. all the girls. Um, in terms of your own ambitions, you're back now uh, from Australia. What's your hopes for the year? Is it to make the starting 15? Is it to, to maybe win a, a trophy, whether it's the League or the Championship, or even maybe both later in the season? We came so close last year. Yeah. Uh, were you aware of that? Did you get a chance to watch the game or were you... Oh, I did. I got. I watched the game, of course. Um, it's just it was so strange to be not a part of the team and watching on. So, coming home in August, um, it was always in the back of my mind that maybe I will go back. And then when I got the call, um, I just couldn't say no, and I was just so delighted to get back into the squad. I suppose my ambitions this year are yes to try and get as much game time as possible. Um, there's such huge um competition for spaces this year that um any time on the pitch is valued. Also if we can just work on our performance and keep that going throughout, I've no doubt that we will come away with some silverware this year. Yeah, of course, yourself today, uh, we're, we're recording this at lunchtime, but uh, named this morning in the Leitrim Observer's Club Team of the Year last year. I don't know if you're aware of that, Jim. I'm sure you were, I've been told at this stage. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of, uh, of those kind of personal accolades, 
how much does that mean to you? Is it, does it matter? Is it something that you're kind of, oh, that's quite proud. I'm pr quite proud to be in that selection. Oh, it's always nice to get those accolades, but at the end of the at the end of the of a game, the whistle blows. You're surrounded by fifteen, thirty girls coming in from the sideline as well. So it's really that that really matters. But it's always nice to get those personal accolades, of course. Absolutely. Uh, before I let you go, I do want to talk to you about Australia a little bit because yeah. it's something that maybe a lot of people watching or listening may not even have had the opportunity to travel there. Now I've been to Gaelic Park outside Melbourne in in uh, Australia. It's a, it's a bit outside Melbourne, a but it's a, bit, lovely, yeah. it's a lovely place to kind of play a game of football or watch a game of football. Yeah. Uh, you had a couple of years out there, four or five years out, out there with, I think it was Wolf Tones you played Wolf with. Tones, correct, yeah. Um, what's, it, what's it like playing football outside of Ireland? How big is the game in places like Melbourne or across the, Australia like that? Absolutely huge. Like of a Sunday, you would forget that you're in another country. Um, the buzz is massive if the crack is huge everyone is there for having a good time and you're playing with girls from all over the country um and the main thing is nobody really goes to australia to play football and it's just an added bonus so i actually went to australia and i didn't bring my boots with me because i didn't think i'd um i said i'll take a wee break from football but sure the first training session that happened i was there and i'm really glad i did because that's where i made most of my friends and i think that's where most people make their friends in australia is part of a ga club but it's interesting to say, like, because we hear stories about high-profile intercounty players moving to America or wherever, mm. usually America, with opportunities around football. But you're saying it went the other way around for you because you went out to for work purposes, I imagine, or just yeah. to, to traveling, and then you ended up staying and football became part of the glue that held you to that community, I suppose. Oh, totally. Um, if I didn't have the GA, I don't think I would have stayed there so long. I made mo most of my friends there, are all were all on the GA team. And I'm still friends with them now that I'm home. A lot of the girls are still out there yet. And I'm hoping that they obviously can progress and do well this year. But when I um, I was lucky, my first year in Melbourne, we won the championship and the previous year after. So that was really, really great. Yeah, it's a well-trodden path as well for yeah. a lot of Legion players. I know in Perth, for example, in Western Australia, um, there's plenty of girls out there like Deirdre McDermott from Mohol, yeah. played for county for years. Bernie, Caroline Egan both played yeah. county football as well. So uh, it's a well, well-trodden path uh, for That's a lot of, of girls and guys uh, to get out and play Gaelic, wherever they happen to be around the yeah. world. But it's great to see you're back on Leitrim shores and uh, playing in the green and gold for Leitrim rather than further afield for the next yeah. A uh, few years anyway, we won't preach it too much, but we'll uh, definitely see a lot of you this year. And uh, yeah. of course, it's this weekend. The game's been live streamed. Check out the, the social media accounts for both Ladies Gaelic and Leitrim LGFA for the specific details on that. Uh, but it's in Ballinamore. If you have an opportunity to get along, the hurlers are, aren't playing this weekend. The footballers aren't playing this weekend. Get out and support the ladies. Uh, it's always a good, an entertaining hour of sports. Roisin, thanks very much for joining us. It's a pleasure yeah, having you so on much. the show. And we'll talk to you again during the season. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Thanks a million. Now, of course, we mentioned at the top of the show, it wasn't just the footballers that enjoyed a victory last weekend on the playing fields. The hurlers got in on the action. In fact, they started the trend on Saturday afternoon. Joining me now is one of their defenders, Stephen Goldrick. Stephen, you're very welcome to the programme. Well, good afternoon. How's things? Great. Uh, nice day out in Abbottstown. Lovely conditions. Look, just everything fantastic on Saturday afternoon, or uh, was it a tough slog? Because the scoreline would suggest you had a relatively straightforward victory against Lancashire. Uh, yeah, the conditions were, were tough now. It was a very strong wind kind of come across the pitch, but um, we had it in the first half. We didn't really perform in our first in the first half now. We were point up at half time, which you know, we didn't make use of the wind. But second half then, we got two early goals and kind of pulled away in the end. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's always nice to get the two goals. The footballers, I suppose, mirror that as well. The two mm. goals kind of set them up nicely for the victory. In terms of, I suppose, the game, it, it's a strange one. You're playing a team that aren't based on the island. COVID, of course, has hampered their preparations for the last two years. They haven't really played a competitive game almost in that period. So how do you prepare as a, as a player or as a squad when you don't really know who you're facing or what they bring to the table in terms of talent and uh, skill and strength and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, it was a weird one. Um, as you mentioned, they haven't played in two years, like so we wouldn't really know what players they had in or what players had gone. Uh, we knew they had two Cork lads and a few from Kilkenny, so like we were wary of like the threat that they, they posed. But um, 
like I say, this is a way game for them. It's a way game for us. They flew over that morning as well. So preparation wasn't ideal for them either. Yeah, in terms of the actual facilities, then the game obviously took place, as you, as we mentioned last week on the show with Martin Feeney, in Abbottstown in the National Sports Campus. It's a fantastic facility up there. Um, I know you've played a couple of games there, but is it a bit surreal? Because it's a decent stand and it's a decent kind of facility, and it, but it's very wide open to the to the conditions as well. If there's a wind yeah, there, actually, you've got to feel it. Yeah, we were on actually one of the back pitches. Uh, there's a Camoga game on the main pitch, but like the surface in that is unreal. Like it's class, but just very open and like the wind, as I said, was outrageous. Um, not not too ideal for hurling, but uh, yeah, it was tough tough going though. Yeah, and of course, some of the uh, the names we've become familiar with in the hurling fields around the county over the last few years uh, pitched in with a fair bit of score. And James McNaboli, your own club mate from Carrick, uh, he got 2-1, I believe. And also um, Gavin O'Hagan, the, the free taker, with 11 points. Uh, th they've been fairly reliable in recent years to get the points and to get the scores when needed. Uh, how important is it that, that those type of players step up and, and really uh, produce on the day to, to, to secure these wins? Yeah, to be fair to Gavin, he kind of kept us in it in the first half with the freeze. Um, I think we went, it was 1-4 at a point we were down in the first half, you know, playing with that wind as well. So it was a poor start from us, but Gavin kind of chipped away at the freeze, kept us in it. Then after half time, Jason Abola got two goals. I think Martin Feeney got one and Jeremy Kelleher got the other. So, um, yeah, I know they kind of hit form in the second half, the forwards. So uh, that was one of the positives I knew from the weekend. We've seen a lot of uh, positivity coming out of the men's football uh, with the change in management. You've still got the same management there, Oaken Conway, back in the the, the job for the, for this year at least, uh, if not further, a lot uh, longer going on. Uh, how how is it freshened up? Is there a new voice in the dressing room? Um, is there anything different about maybe from where you were at the end of last season? Um, I'd say it's just the lads like they're playing together you know it's a few years now we're all playing together i think it's my fourth year on it so we've kind of getting to know each other better and it's kind of it's coming together now whereas like we're all on the kind of one level field like you know it's not there's no one that's miles ahead of everyone else or miles behind we're all kind of on the one level and you know we're all going towards the one goal and that is to try and do the best yeah, rising tide, all the levels get grown together. It sounds great. In terms of though, on the on the on the field and, and in the dressing room, uh, you're with Carrick Curlin, obviously county champions for many many years. Although Manor or including a Munch have been running you close for a long long time, they finally got the better of you in the championship final last year. It's the first time you've been back in dressing rooms really with them since then. Any major impact? Any kind of slagging? Any kind of uh, little bit of a grudge settling in at all there? Yeah. About the fact that there's really. <laughs> a bit a bit of slag of us like good crack like but uh to be fair to all the lads like the Carrick and Manor lads when when they come together for for the county that like you know, we're all wearing the one jersey we're all in it for the one goal and everyone gets on good and you know the crack is good as well yeah absolutely in terms of I suppose uh, I've known you since you were knee high to a grasshopper around Leitrim village and uh, you've always had a hurl in your hand even when you were at football training you and your brother would probably have a little puck around before anyone else got there for training for for 10 or 15 minutes uh, what is it about the sport to hurling because it's not a big sport in the region what is it about hurling that's always drawn you in even at that young age um she's like no it's just it's enjoyable to play you know it's it's fast paced it's physical you know it's something else you know if you're involved in sports you'll you like any sport so it's just football and hurling is you know the main two football be the main one but like just another another sport to play past the time if you had to pick between them do you have a favorite or are you just not prepared to commit to that just yet oh no we won't, won't commit to that <laughs> yet, <man. laughs> now you're wearing a jersey there is that a, a Galway jersey that i'm seeing on you or uh no it's a legion jersey it's oh, a little okay. we got the new training gear, it looks nice. Yeah. I must have to look into that myself. Uh, yeah. do, you know, do you know where I can get it? Leak from GA website. We will exactly. pick it up from the cameras. Um, in terms of the next week, obviously, a weekend off, but the rest of the three teams are all local. Fermanagh, Cavan, and Longford, you play Cavan in, yeah. I think it's two weeks' time. Yeah, in, we have the next two weeks off, I think. So it's yeah, but the next fixture yeah. is uh, two weeks' time against Cavan. Will you get a chance this weekend? Will you bother going to another game to go maybe have a look at what they're up to? With the game's not been streamed now, we don't have that facility to kind of check up what other teams do without physically actually going there. So can you see yourself making the journey to, to Longford or to Fermanagh where um, that game's taking place this week? Yeah, we'll see. We'll be training anyway Sunday, so it depends with, with time and everything. But 
I'm sure if lads get a chance to, they'll, they'll go up to Longford to the game, yeah. And what's it like trying to compare? Because it's a very different world to 20 years ago when I was in college, but it's a very different world now with the commitment that's required of an inter-county athlete to be a student, to maybe be, be just the cost of travel and all that sort of stuff. How how difficult is it to be part of a senior squad at the moment uh, as a student living outside of the county? Um, I don't think it's that difficult, you know, for students because it's something to look forward to during the week. You know, it passes. The week flies, you know, when you're training us, look forward to, like, we're training at half seven there in that loan tonight. So, uh, you know, it's something to look forward to during the week and, you know, get to meet the lads and, you know, have the crack. So, yeah, no, it's, it's not difficult at all. What's the ambition for this year? You obviously, one win in the bag. You play for Manor Cab and Longford to come uh, later in the league campaign. Is a league final within this team? We got there last year in Division 3B. Wasn't to be against Sligo. Is there a league final? Is there a league title within this squad of players? Um, yeah, that that'll be the goal. Um, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but it's, we are taking it one game at a time. Uh, we kind of focus on the Lancashire game, you know, because we knew we had the weeks off now, so it was important to go out, get the win. So we've Cavan next, so we'll we'll just try to get another two points on the board down and, and see what happens after that. Yourself, obviously, playing in, in the set half back line this this year. Happy enough just to be on the field. Any particular preference? I know you played a little bit of full back with the club in recent seasons. Uh, no, just happy out to be on the field. Yeah, it's always a good start. Well, listen, Stephen, thanks very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure as always to catch up with everything the hurlers are doing, and I'm sure we'll be chatting to you and your teammates through the rest of the season as well. The very best of luck in a couple of weeks against Cam. Thanks, perfect. Now, of course, the GAA isn't all about football hurling and the various sporting codes there is of course a cultural side to everything that happens within the Gaelic Athletic Association and it comes under the umbrella of SCORE. Now joining me is Leitrim's SCORE officer, cultural officer, I think it's the official title on the county board. Laura Crossan, you're very very welcome to the show. Kermail Magat, I'm delighted to be here to represent SCORE. It's often forgotten about but I suppose it forms such a huge part of the GAA and originally set up, I guess, to uh, bring people together within clubs during the winter months. I know we're looking at a, diff a different timeline at the moment, but that was kind of the original basis for it um, to kind of promote all things culture, Irish culture through your GA clubs and to give people a chance to meet up, I guess, when the games were, weren't possible and matches were put on the back burner. Yeah, and it also accommodates people who maybe aren't interested in the sport, but keeps them involved in the, the fabric of the club and the community that they're they're from as well. Now, of course, you were the obvious target whenever I was looking for someone to have a chat about this. I saw you post on social media during the week about some of the upcoming dates for Scorn and Oak and maybe some of the, the later dates in the year for, for Scorn Sincher. And shame on me for not introducing you in Irish. So uh, obviously it's been a, a cultural thing. Uh, tell me a little bit about the dates first. We, we get that out of the way and then we'll chat maybe about what score is to those who, who yeah. aren't familiar with it. Perfect. Okay, so scoring an OG, and um, we're delighted that it's returning to the stage. We we were virtual for a lot of last year and both nationally and at a local level. So the Leitrim County Final is going to be the weekend of the 11th to the 13th of March. So it will be on one of those days, either the Friday, Saturday or Sunday. We're just waiting to confirm venues and judges at the moment. Then we're looking at the Connick Final, which will take place on the 2nd of April and then the All-Ireland Final on the 1st of May in Killarney. So they're the dates for scoring an Oak. And then later on in the year, we're going to be looking at the All-Ireland Final for Score Shincher will be on the 15th of October and that will also take place in Killarney. So we're looking at, I suppose, the county finals and the provincial finals for, for Score Shincher in, I suppose, September, October time. Yeah, so plenty of time for clubs to get themselves ready. A little bit more pressure for scoring an OG in the next two to three or four weeks. Uh, but what's involved for a club? Tell us a bit about, first of all, maybe what score is, because we can talk about the culture, but uh, it's singing, it's dancing. But tell us more specifically, maybe some of the disciplines that are involved. Yeah. OK, so we have like uh, Rink of Four now, which is figure dancing. We have solo singing, recitation or storytelling, instrumental music, ballad group. We have the novelty act, set dancing and the quiz. So I suppose um, there is definitely a singer in every club in Leitrim. Um, we saw multiple singers across all ages and all clubs last year, and we hope to get as many of them on the on the real stage this year as we can. So um, the score, the national committee have, you know, they understand the time pressure on clubs, which is exactly why they have put a number of workshops in place over the next few weeks. 
So if you have a singer in your club that's interested but maybe doesn't know what SCORE is about, there is four singing workshops over the next number of weeks to help teach them a song. And they've broken them into two uh, formats, one for children aged 8 to 12 and a second workshop on the same evening for age 13 to 17. So I suppose the age aspect is quite important for SCORE and OAK. Um, participants have to be under 17 on the 1st of January of this year. So if they're under 17 on the 1st of January, then they're eligible for scoring an OAK. If they're over uh, that age group, then they're looking at score sheen tree later on in the year. But I guess, you know, we're absolutely blessed with the fact that there's so much music and dancing happening in all halls and all schools across County Leitrim at the moment. And I suppose score is a domain that kind of gives the opportunity to bring those together. And I know certainly in my own club, St Mary's, we've seen a lot of new families move into the area. And I know it's not unique to St Mary's. I know it's across all clubs in the county. And people ask, oh, you know, what is that? But if you don't play sport, like you've already mentioned, Breffney, I suppose score is another aspect into the GAA, because as we all know, the GAA is the backbone of all parishes across Ireland. And if you don't play sport or if your children don't play sport, how do you get to know the people in the area? And we've certainly found, you know, parents have come back and said, God, if we weren't asked into score, you know, we never would have got to know people in the area. So I suppose it's another aspect of the GA. It doesn't all have to be sport orientated as well. So that's the beauty of it, I guess. And I suppose from a, a success point of view, not that everything is measured in, in medals or trophies, uh, but <laughs> if you do want to measure it like that, Leitrim Punch is well above its weight in the score it field does. above everyone else. And there's all Ireland's to beat the band. There's figure dancing and set dancing from Manor Hamilton. There's ballad groups from Carrick. There's novelty acts from Balnamore and Tony Gesh yeah, from, yeah. from Borna Kula. There's so many clubs have tasted success at provincial and, and national level once they get out of the county as well. But fundamentally, it's about learning new skills, building confidence and, and growing communities as well. Is it fair to say? Yeah, it absolutely is. And I know like people look at those successful clubs and they think, God, we'll never match them. So why would we bother? And I suppose, you know, from my own point of view, people look at me and think, God, you know, she's had much success in score. She's done it her whole life. And in fact, it's quite the opposite because in my club, I just was at that kind of unlucky stage. There was a huge history of score, I suppose, maybe with the generation ahead of me. And I just missed out on, on it. My first experience of score was in my last year of junior score. And at that time, Cormac McGill, Lord Restham, had a rule in place where you had to have three acts to compete. And we had a ballad group and we couldn't enter the ballad group unless we had a solo singer. So I got shoved up to do solo singing, didn't know the words of the song to his disgust. I'd say the poor man was looking, thinking, who put this girl up to sing? But we were able, that was our first taste of score. And I suppose we built on that, you know, year after year. And there was many years where I was put up doing things that I wasn't able for. I, You can ask my sister. She shouted the lines of my recitations in off the stage. I couldn't remember them. And I'd say I was more like a novelty act than a recitation. But I suppose the mes message we're trying to get out this year, particularly after the pandemic, is, you know, get out there and give it a go. It doesn't have to be perfection at the start. You know, if you start off getting your youngsters up there, you you have something to build on from next year. And at the National Committee are really trying to hammer that message home this year, because if we don't build on it this year, you know, it, it will die out, unfortunately. Yeah, and you mentioned Cormac McGill and hugely, hugely influential in score in the in the, the county and, and further afield over many, many years before his passing. Um, he actually had a rule, I think it's almost 20 years ago now, where he wanted to see every single club compete in score. How far off that are we? And maybe if there's a club that aren't active in score, what's involved in them getting maybe a group of kids together to to showcase their talents over the next few uh, few weeks? Well, I suppose I really would like to reach out to clubs in that we have definitely got a singer in every club in the county. 100% we have. And we can totally build on that and from that. Um, I suppose the workshops that are in place are there to help clubs get off the ground. I'm here. You know, any club that wants to reach out to me, I by all means, I'd be more than happy to come out to your club and help you get involved. You know, it seems like a mammoth task, but if you start this year with one solo singer, one recitation, a quiz team, if you can, and build on it from next year. But, you know, the resources are there. The National Committee have put, you know, sample quiz questions together. They're giving out sample songs to everyone. You know, children in school now are so fortunate. They're immersed in a rich culture of songs and poems. So you definitely have a club member in your club 
who can sing or dance or perform in some aspect. And I guess we're asking you to reach out to the people in your club who will know those people and who can tap at them and, and get them involved. Absolutely. Well, listen, Laura, sounds like a fantastic thing. Obviously, yourself, not just from the organizational point of view, but from participation yourself, uh, you hold an interesting record, I believe. Four different events in the All Ireland final on the one day. That just sounds chaotic. Yeah, it was chaotic, Breffney, and it happened by complete default <laughs> because my sister was the cultural officer at the time. And we had actually entered the exact same acts in the county final the previous year and we didn't win anything. <laughs> we didn't win any county titles. And my sister was saying, Laura, please, will you try and get something together for your club for St. Mary's? And I said, well, look, we will. But like, you know, it's hard to ask people to put in like commitment and and effort when they're not winning things, you know, when when they have good acts. And she said, look, just do what you did last year. It was great. And like we had a bit of crack getting a pack together again. We really went in with a different attitude. We really were like, ah, oh, sure. Look, it's about the crack and the participation. And we won four county titles. Again, we went to the Connacht final. We were like, gosh, sure, look, it is what it is. We'll see what we get out of it. And to my shock and despair, I came away with four Connacht titles, which was great. <laughs> but it was stressful on the day because you at the All-Ireland final, you have four sound checks, you have four practices. And I literally was stripping off one costume and putting on the next. And, you know, it was amazing that Leitrim have that record now. And to be the person that holds it but i it's certainly not for the faint hearted <laughs> yeah well of course you have to go home to your father of course noel cross and goalkeeper on the leitrim team of the millennium uh but he hasn't got a connacht medal you have a couple in the back pocket all in the one day uh this is laura it's been a pleasure chatting well i'll give you. you a better story Bethany. go on i'll give you a better story so our ballad group were invited to play at half time of the galway tipperary hurling match in crow park it was the hurling semi-final and I was delighted. I was like, oh, we're getting to play Crow Park at halftime. And my dad said, well, you know, you might be getting to play halftime, but like I got to play the full match. <laughs> good, good man, no, <laughs> never want to leave you hanging. Listen, Laura, it's been a pleasure. People can get more information, I presume, on the Leach from GA website, social media over the next couple yeah, of weeks. You can of course, so all the information for any of the workshops um, and my contact details are on the Facebook page. They're also on the Le Leach from GA website. And please, Feel free to contact me at any time. I'm more than happy to help clubs get involved. I'll be contacting all of the clubs in the coming days. And here's to a great uh, 2022 for Leitrim score. We hope to see as many acts as possible on stage. Absolutely. Laura, thanks very much for joining us. Best luck. Thanks, Bethany, for having me.